All right, so it's 8 p.m. and here we are. Welcome, ISO buddies. You're welcome to the show. Um, yeah, welcome. It's actually 6 p.m. where I am because time zones. Well, those are I never understand those. It's Tuesday there, right? Still, that's that's yeah, good. still. I mean, even okay. in places where it's Wednesday, if you're watching, let YouTube do the time zones for you. We'll put it up. You just tune in. <laughs> <laughs> I had like 40 requests for the time on the show today. It was fantastic. I was like, come on, guys. Seriously. Um, so we have a very special show for you today, but this is Claire. This is Claire over here, and I'm pointing in the right direction, so I must be getting the hang of this. So she's been with us since the beginning and will be until the end. Um. Claire keeps That's bugs, Claire. a lizard. She sells bugs. She puts bugs in jars and wears them on her neck. She mm. wears lizard skin on her neck. I've got lizard skin lizard today. Day. Yeah. Lizard day. Got to show this off. So while I'm showing off my lizard skin, that's Josh, or you might know him as uh, Johannes or Johannes of the groups. Um, you might think he's Nathan Fillion. Um, he might be. We're not telling. But that if might the be. The billions watching and wants to come hang out and talk about bugs with us. We'd love to get them on the guest list. <laughs> I should reach out to him. Everybody else has said yes so far, except yeah. Grady. Except one. Oh, yeah. But, guys, tell all of your friends and share the link because if we get 40 people at one time during this live stream, said Grady will be uh, dressing up like a clown for us and making it his profile picture of the group. He sent so. the wig. Yeah, it's harder to get the camera on, isn't it? Yeah, it's harder to yeah. figure out where it is. Especially well, you can kind of make it out. So it it's is a, treasure a piece map. Of blue belly lizard shed, and then I watercolor painted a piece of paper that's in the background, so you get the nice color with it. Fantastic. And I made a bunch of these. I'm going to be putting them up when I get an online store going. Uh, but on Facebook at Blue Belly Creations, I'll at least have some pictures that you can PM me about them there. Well, kind of along those lines, we're going to be talking about lizards tonight, not blue bellies anymore. No. Nope. In a minute, but. Um, Angie shared her Wisconsin group. Uh, Grady wanted to compliment our hair and sweaters, which I'm super excited about. Uh, yeah, we have a great yeah. guest tonight. Nice we have a great guest tonight. So we've got to focus. He's going to have a lot to talk about. We're going to have a lot to get through. So we have Wally Kern of Supreme Gecko slash Isopod. Tonight, we're going to focus on the geckos. So we've got a lot of good questions for him. We're really excited to have him here and feel very fortunate to have such a great relationship with Wally. And Ching is here. Wally. So let's, without further ado, let's bring on the great Wally Kern and the wonderful Nanette Kern. <laughs> All right. Oh, they're in a weird oh, format. We Here we go. Hey. Let's put them in the forefront. Hey, welcome. We're so happy to have you. We're so excited that you're here. Oh, it's um, our pleasure entirely. And your blue bellies, I, I resemble that because I'm a yellow belly, so I'm, <laughs> I'm right there with you, so... <laughs> Fantastic. I knew there'd be jokes and I knew there'd be Nanette. Oh. Just right off the bat, too. I hope I can earn one of those by the end of the night. I just want one of those head shakes. I'm so used to it in my house. I want to see it from Nanette before we go. So work really hard. Oh, I'm sure we'll get there. I'm sure we'll get there. Wally won't allow me to ask questions. Who's who's Andy Schwartz, Wally? Right off the bat. Do we know and, Angie oh, no, Schwartz? And, and, no, Angie, Angie, can't. Angie, oh. Angie can't answer, ask any questions. She can ask, <laughs> but I'm not going to answer them. Sorry, sorry, Angie. <clears throat> sorry, Angie, we're going to hide your question. You. <laughs> sorry, Angie. Um, I guess if you have a question, put it in there anyway, and maybe Josh or I will know. I'll forget that um, you're not allowed to ask questions for sure, and I'll answer them. Yeah. And, um, Angie is one of our guys? closest friends. Oh, oh good. Yeah. Well, all right. We've already got new people on the show so we're getting for closer to 40. yeah we need our 40. um so for our wonderful wonderful audience um we will have some time for q a at the end don't worry about it you will get lots of time to ask your questions but if you have one that absolutely can't wait just put it in the queue and our good friend the chunky avocado is behind the scenes and if we don't get to it while we're doing our interview we'll make sure it gets pulled up at the end absolutely yeah, if you absolutely can't hold your question. Uh, just try, try your hardest. So go take a potty break and come back, and uh, we'll be here. So Wally, right, I'm gonna start us off. I get to start us off. So, um, do you have any special background in geckos, or any special training or education? I know you've got the training. You've got the years in, right? I have no formal training on geckos or isopods or tropical fish whatsoever. 
I have so a no. ton. I have nothing, nothing formal. No, no name tag that says doctor. I have nothing there at all. But what I do have is I started with, I actually started fishing when I was just a kid. I uh, got interested so much in the fish that I kept a fish tank, which became two fish tanks. Did you know that two fish tanks sitting right next to each other will breed and make four fish tanks? Did you know that? <laughs> so I started I that. tropical fish. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's a, a scientific fact. I read that in the book somewhere. So I, by the time, upstairs. <laughs> that's, uh, that's why when I was a kid, we were only allowed to have the one fish tank. There you go, Mark. So I went from two to four to eight to sixteen to a hundred and twenty-five fish tanks, which, and that was probably about fifteen years of keeping tropical fish. This is pre-internet. Mailing out all over the, the United States, getting fish in all over the place, mm -hmm. having Saturdays, people coming down and talking fish and reading publications. And so my training, I have no training, but my experience is coming from keeping fish, watching nature, going out to a creek and, and pulling up rocks and just sitting there watching the life. Um, and I, I think that that's important for everybody. It, you know, book training is great, great stuff, but actual life experiences, I think, is just as important, if not more. I went from the fish to what did I go into next? Orchids and all kinds of other things, and eventually made my found my way to geckos, and uh, eventually the last three or four years into isopods. So I've been keeping reptiles, reptiles themselves, chameleons and geckos and everything else for about 20 years. So that's my wow. my experience. No formal training though. That's, I feel like that's almost formal training, like so that much trial and error. Awesome. It, it is, it is, and, and a lot of trial and a lot of errors. Um, but, you know, I, I said this so many times, I, I hate to be repetitive, but I've made so many mistakes. I'm a great source of information because if it can go wrong, it's gone wrong here. The key is to to not dwell on the errors, but but watch the errors, understand what happened, and get over it, and get over it, and learn, and ask questions, and and move on. We're gonna get into that more later. We're gonna get into okay. the errors more later for sure. Promise. Well, we I don't do know how long this show is, that. but I've got plenty of errors to talk about. Oh well, <laughs> we're gonna ask about the is... biggest one. So think about that. But not answer it yet. I but shall. The biggest one later. Uh, our goal is between half an hour and an hour. But you know, if it's if you want to talk more, we'll give you time. <laughs> All right. So when did you get serious about the hobby? Because twenty years is a long time to be in it. But I know not all of us jump right in. The hobby being geckos specifically. Geckos, I suppose. Geckos whatever. Yeah. It is. It is. It's a long time being in the hobby and. And, uh, you know, I started off with keeping chameleons. You know, when everybody talks about reptiles, they talk about leopard geckos or crested geckos or turtles or something a little bit easier. I jumped in with both feet and I started keeping chameleons 20 years ago. And I, and I kept the pygmy chameleons and the, um, the panther chameleons, the really hard ones, got them to breed. Felt like I was doing something special and got into uh, lizards and then uh, crusteds. Eventually, found my way into the kind of the rare and exotic geckos that that you know. Again, I can sit and watch all night long. Little geckos that nobody knows the names of and probably nobody cares about. But for me, you know, that's my fascination. That's my fire. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is. And I feel like there's always new species coming up, or or new morphs or whatever there's always something new coming up in the hobby too um, there, wow. there are but even more so if they change the name so frequently it just feels like there's more species new species <laughs> you gotta keep changing labels you have to, i have to a little sharpie line through it yes um so now you said you were been in with geckos for about 20 years now yeah. so what would you say is one of your greatest successes or if you know like your greatest success as far as uh, in the hobby, like as a breeder, I guess, or do they have one yeah. named after you? I, I don't. The the uh, Wally Soros Kern Harrelay. I don't know. I, I can't <laughs> even think of a name. Um, um, is that one of your looks? 
I, I don't have any species named after me. Uh, in the fish world, I had some publications that they got national recognition. For, for geckos, I'm just, I'm just a common gecko keeper. Uh, from okay. a success okay. standpoint, I would say from a success standpoint is being able to drive forward and have people, this is going to sound really weird because somebody's going to say, what's your greatest success in gecko keeping? And they're expecting an answer from me of uh, the name of a gecko. Oh my gosh, you bred that. I look at myself from a success standpoint in the number of messages messages that I get every single day asking, how do I keep this? Or this happened, what went wrong? Can you help me with this? Can you point me in the direction of what do you think is the best way to do something? So my success is being able to take, you know, this little hobby with two leopard geckos to now, I don't know, uh, 400, 500 enclosures of geckos, uh, probably a couple of thousand geckos downstairs. And from there, being able to feel like I, I know a little bit about enough about some of these geckos to be able to help people out, you know, from YouTube to the, the Facebook to emails and be able to answer questions that hopefully will help the care of some of these geckos. That's my success. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's a great success. Thank that's you very what I want to hear. Do you want to hear a failure or two? Not yet. Okay. Well, okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> Which is fine. Our actually, guests already tend to do that. Actually, you're kind of not. <laughs> oh, am I there already? I'm there already. You are yeah. there already. I put That's success the next failures question. next to each other. <laughs> That's the next question. So what would you consider your greatest failure or one of your biggest uh, mistakes, I guess, in the hobby? Like, I know you talk about them on your YouTube channel a lot. You talk about um, specifically to help other people, but you, you know, illustrate your own failures or mistakes. But what would you say is one of the ones maybe not everyone knows about or Nanette, do you want to help me out here a little bit while I think of something can you think of a failure that we've had I'm not trying to, to think uh, say that I, we haven't had failures we have failures like every single day it's from small failures that you know um, gosh I would have put that pair together quicker I wish I wouldn't have put the pair together um, what can you think of any failures with supreme gecko i mean you can think of lots of failures with me but from a supreme gecko standpoint Ouch. from a supreme gecko what's what's one of our failures um i i guess equipment wise maybe the misting system i would have to agree so so as we move forward with our, our hobby, we've, we've tried to make it simpler, easier, better care, as long as it's better care for the animals. And I've installed misting systems on a number of our tanks. Well, last year we, um, we brought in some very unique animals and uh, they were doing well. Misting system was working fine. Misting system stopped. I didn't realize it and we lost animals. So oh, wow. any big breeder is going to lose animals. And I alluded to this earlier, you know, one of, I think one of my successes in what I'm doing, both from a professional standpoint, when I was with, was when I was working with computers and project management, and now with the geckos is that I can have a huge failure like that. I can dwell on it and take it really super tough. I believe me, I took it really, really hard. I can take it really hard, but then the next day I can get up and say, okay, where do I make this better? What did I do wrong? How can I make this better? And how can I teach people to not do what I just did? <laughs> That's great. That's great. I love that, um, that idea for the culture of the hobby itself. So just build on mistakes. You have to. That's how you learn. You have to. And I think that, that if you kind of uh, dwell on it too long, it, it it eats at you and it and it pushes you backwards. It should push you backwards for a time, but you've got to get over it. You've got you have to, you know, get right back on the tracks and start moving forward again as quick as possible. Oh, fin yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's there's always a learning curve and there's always something more to learn. Yep. Yep. And if we 100%. can share our failures like Wally's saying and prevent somebody else from having the same one, then we're doing even better. I, I think you're absolutely right. 
All right. Um, next question. So who or what got you into the hobby? Into reptiles specifically. This is a really, really easy answer for me. I used to keep tropic, super easy for me. I used to keep tropic fish. Yeah, I hesitate and pause with every question because I'm honestly trying to think of the best way to answer some of these. But from a reptile standpoint, I go back to when I was keeping fish. Uh, I visited a fellow, a fellow fish keeper uh, out in Los Angeles, and they, they had just gone through uh, a tragic earthquake uh, three, four months before. He had 50 or 60 tanks of some of the most expensive fish you could ever think of, and it all just came crashing down. And the hobby you know, helped him build it back up. Um, a lot of people sent him a lot of really nice fish, and that's great. But I visited him, took him some fish, and um, walking into his house, I was so impressed. He had a, I'm, I'm probably under exaggerating, but he had a four foot by four foot by six foot tall enclosure, screened enclosure, and he had Jackson chameleons in there. And he had probably eight to 10 Jacksons and the behavior in the eyes. I do this like I can do their eyes and the tongue <laughs> and how they walked around, you know, the, the hesitation, the leaf kind of was just mesmerizing, mesmerizing. And, you know, Miles and I, he wanted to talk fish. Miles, I, I just want to look at your chameleons. Um, so that was many, many years before I had gotten into the reptiles. So I got out of fish because of career and family. Years and years, years later, I get back into reptiles and I really wanted to keep chameleons. So that's kind of what started me off on that track. That's awesome. And it was a, built out of a charity thing you were doing. It, it um, was. I didn't think of it as charity. I, I thought of it, I think, you know, I think at the time I thought of it as it's going to happen to me sooner or later. So, you know, I'm just paying it forward here or paying it backwards or whatever it is. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I have the next question and I didn't have it written down. Uh, what do you think is the most rewarding part of the hobby? For, for what I do in the hobby or most rewarding for me, what I get out of the hobby? Yeah, I guess what you, yeah. What do you think is the most rewarding part for Wally Kern? I, I bet you, you know, what do you think? What, what do you think? gets me up every single morning thinking about the reptiles. What's the first thing I do me when telling I'm telling you to get up and me. get going? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Kidding. Besides Just you kidding. besides you turning eating me, <laughs> turning on the TV, turning on the lights and getting me up in the morning, what's the second thing that I really drives Wally Kern? I love it. I love having the net here. It's the best thing, best decision ever. Ever. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot for inviting her. Good job, guys. I think it's just knowing that you can help people and you, you, the people that come back and they tell you what they've learned and how much they love the animals they've gotten from you, I think is your drive and the education part of it for you. Am I right or wrong? I was going to say money, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably, I think there's two things. I think there's two things. <clears throat> I think it is getting on, getting up, going to my messages and answering messages. The first thing I do when I get down to the reptile room is baby check, baby check, baby check. I walk over to the incubators, babies. And I've said this for years and years and years. And I wholeheartedly believe this. The very first day, the very first day I walk down there, I open up an incubator. I look in a deli cup. And there's a baby, and I'm not as excited that day as I was the very first day that I started seeing babies. I should just quit the hobby because I, I'm the passion is there with every single one of these babies that hatch, hatches out. Now this, this picture, can you see this? Yeah. Yes, I can. Now this is an incubator. This is a serious incubator, yeah? That is not an incubator. That is actually, uh, it's close. We are incubating, but that's tackle trays or beard bead trays. So every one of those is a bead tray, and everyone has about 15 compartments, and every compartment has two eggs. 
And this is one species that we did a few years ago. This is, if I'm not mistaken, that might be um, Periodora picta, uh, the Madagascar ground gecko. So you can tell from one species how, how many babies we got from this facility for Periodora picta that year. Wow. wow. I mean, that's, that's impressive. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's really fun. Mike feel awful. <clears throat> It's fun. It's fun hatching out Periodora picta. It's fun hatching out crusted geckos. It's fun hatching out leopard geckos. I, I will say, though, you know, four or five years ago, I was really, really into the leopard geckos. Just love them. The love the morphs and the, the different colors and patterns you can. It almost feels like you're an artist, you know, combining these animals. I, I bring out time to bring out a leopard gecko, if you don't mind. Let's and do I'll it. Talk to this. Yeah, let's do um, it. Leopard geckos are super, super cool. They're super easy to handle. They're lots and lots of fun. Just kind of giving this one a chance to warm up to me. And then that's backing off right away. I don't want, I don't want to be eating. So like four or five years ago, I, I was doing hundreds, hundreds of leopard geckos. This one wants to squirm, so it might get out of the picture for a second. I was doing hundreds and hundreds of geckos, and unfortunately, Fortunately, we were selling a lot. Unfortunately, it wasn't the thing that I had a passion on. Um, I just really wasn't interested in in the babies with the leopard geckos. So, you know, it was all, it started to become money. So I went from having dozens and dozens of breeders, and I, I went down to about five or six different groups. And now, now, oops, now, I only breed for what I really, really, really like to breed with. I hope everybody can see that. He's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to hold him so I don't drop him. What is the morph? What would you call that morph? This is a tan sun. So it's a tangerine uh, mixed with a tremper albino. Okay. Nice, beautiful orange tail, nice orange color on the body. There we go. Now it's settling down. That tail is amazing. Um, I had a question I wanted to pull up from the chat. So Please. it goes back to the picture we were just looking at with the breeders. Uh, and that refund is supposed to be fecund. So those geckos are fecund. F-E-C-U-N-D. How many yeah, breeders If the geckos were fecund, how many breeders? How many breeders do we have currently? With the pictus. Well, in that picture that we looked at with all those pictus oh, eggs. Pictus. Um, one that works really, really super hard. I, I no, give her credit. I mean, she's. No. Um, how many picta <laughs> breeders do we have? We have probably about a dozen, a dozen, dozen to fifteen. About. Wow. wow. So how many eggs do you get in a season from a pair like that? Well, there were probably, let's say, ten tub, ten of those uh, uh, feed containers, ten times. 15 is 150 times two eggs per, so that's 300. And we probably, we probably cycle through that whole bin maybe a couple of times a year. But that was one year. Yeah, to be to be very fair, we put the males with females. We only let the females breed for a certain amount of time. And being able to take the males out will stop the females after a few lays. Wow, that's wow. way less stressful for them. Yes, yeah, yes, good. absolutely. Um, Hope that answered the question. I think it did. I think okay. it did. Yeah, he's we, saying we well, no. <laughs> this was the response. So I think we answered that question. Um, is it? Is it my question? Is it your question? I think it's my question. All right, fantastic. So, I it was it's mine. a good thing we've all restarted getting geckos out. What is your favorite or the most interesting gecko to work with? The favorite that I have right now, or the one that I would most be interested in obtaining? Both. Both. It Can I do both? Got time for both. Yeah, let's do both. <laughs> okay. My favorite gecko right now is Periodora picta. Um, and, and I don't mean to focus on this one animal so much, but Periodora picta is cute and handleable. Cute and handleable big puppy dog eyes i have one right here let's see if it'll let me hold it yeah it is ready to go but it'll get on my hand hopefully 
So let's see if I can get it in focus here. Now, is that full grown? This is just short of full grown. Okay. But the cool thing about Periodora picta is that they have all kinds of morphs. So some have the striping down them. I'm trying to get a good angle on this guy, but I am feeling miserably. So they have this beautiful striping. They can be reticulated. Um, they can have different colors. They can be albino. And it's just, you know, it, it peaks and we get some of these colors from breeders and then the breeders kind of fade off and do other things. So I would like to really focus on, I'm trying to get myself out of the picture and the Picta in. <laughs> That's not it's working. coming to focus randomly. Yeah, the so, camera doesn't like the foreground. No, it doesn't. So what I'm what I, yeah, I still want to focus. So what I'd like to do is keep moving this species forward and see some results from uh, different types of morphs and traits. That's what I would like to do. If I had one species that I really, really, really would like to keep at some point, and my the, the species is, I love this genus, Periodora. There's several different animals, species within this genus that are super cool. The one that I would really like to keep and do well with would be Periodora, or uh, Periodora Masobe. Uh, Masobe is black with white spangles. It's about three times as big as this Pictus. It's super oh, hard. Negative on that. No, it's not that big. We're hearing that it's not that big, Wally, from pretty solid source. This mm -hmm. this isn't that big. No, you're you're whatever the, the other, other one. one. You, you're getting the head shape yeah. three times as big as that is a little bit of an exaggeration. And that's not a green with you on that at all. I don't want one big like that. Okay, <laughs> let me ask you who has Toby. <laughs> Who has Masobia is telling me that they're not three times as they're big. Telling, they're thinking and then that. that was next to you like this. Oh, I was saying, oh. no. I was saying you can't have what? something that big. You're saying I'm exaggerating? No. You're saying I can't have it. You okay, I got gotcha. you. All right. We misunderstood. It was a you can't have it. You got to keep working on that one. Molly. I misunderstood the head nod. <laughs> yeah, it's too big for me. I, uh, I had the opportunity to obtain Masobi from a really super close friend. And he almost wanted to give me the animals. I kept saying, no, Harold, I, I can't do it because I didn't have enough experience at the time. They're, they're super tough. I, I, I've heard so many stories of people not succeeding with this animal that I didn't want to be one of those stories, one of those horror stories. And I didn't want to think that I could give such a magnificent animal, you know, a home, but then not be able to care for it the right way. So um and since then you know madagascar has been shut down from imports and we just don't see the animal here yeah, in the yeah. united states at all oh, there's oh, so much pressure awesome. on breeders yes yes there is is that my mic that's giving everybody a problem maybe it's less I'm now okay sure. sorry still new <laughs> um now i have a i have a very personal question here to ask you wally so I how did you get, I'm hoping that one of you has the answer. So how did you get Nanette, the wonderful Nanette, to help you with everything? Nanette, were you into the hobby uh, already when you met Wally? Or did you just accept your state? Sure, answer it. Uh, money. Pretty much money. <laughs> no, it's not money. <laughs> no. You can't even afford shoes down there. She's down there working barefoot, poor woman. Get her some shoes. <laughs> I Somebody went shoes. watching our videos. I hate I can tell. I can tell. Um, you put together one hell of a cabinet display, I'll tell you. <laughs> or a shelf display. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that most of the time I don't get much warning before those videos are done. Normally it's like 10 minutes before and I'm running to do my hair or get cleaned up or something so that I'm halfway presentable. Um, I did not have any interest at all in the hobby before at nothing. And I think basically I just kind of started helping out so we could be together and spend time and help out when he was working mega hours so that the animals would succeed and he wouldn't lose a lot of animals at that time. I love that. It's, it's not my first place to be. I mean, I'm not going to, I wouldn't do it myself without him here. So Can I'll tag on to that. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll tag on to that comment. And, and when you say help, it's not, it's not, you know, me downstairs for four hours and, and Nanette comes down and, and spends 10 or 15 minutes. Here's the extent of the help that she provides. Um, we got done with the show this weekend 
and Sunday night we had to ship out lots of boxes, hundreds and hundreds of animals, hundreds of animals, and because the the shipping window opened up for us, so we had to ship them out um, weather wise. Weather wise, um, Monday morning. So, so you had been holding, you had been holding some animals for people. I, I had been holding orders for since way before December, even even into thir- um, uh, November. Wow. So a lot of patient, a lot of patient customers. So we get home from this show and shows are, reptile shows are different in that you get up early, you work on the animals, you go to the show, you get done with the animals, you talk up to other reptile keepers, and then you go to, go to bed, who knows when, sometimes you don't. So after this long weekend, starting on Thursday night, all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Sunday, we drive home, we get home at about 5.30 or so, and we start working on these shipments. At 3 o'clock in the morning, we finally finish up. The net gets up at 5.30, then the next morning or that morning, and starts working on the, the labels. So that's one aspect of this. The other is that in January, I, I fell pretty ill, and for about three or four weeks, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So obviously somebody had to to work with the animals. So when I finally got a chance to get up and get downstairs, um, no signs of any, probably the animals fared better than my care. So, you know, when you talk about helping, when you talk about helping, it's not, it's not helping. It's a, it's a joint adventure for us. I like that a lot. You can tell I, awesome. that that whole question was out of the video I saw of her handling the dubia roaches and sorting them <laughs> and just the expert level of sorting. And it was like in her face, then that in your face, it was like half like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. This is no big deal. This is every other day and half like, what the hell am I doing every other day? <laughs> <laughs> and it was the perfect blend. And you could just read that. I, I totally love that you could read it on your face, the whole video. <laughs> If you great. listen, if you turn up the volume, if you turn up the volume, what you can actually hear is, I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. I had the video down, so I could just hear that old, like, Hanna-Barbera, Hillbilly Bears. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, half Boomhauer, well, half Hillbilly Bears. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that the appropriate way to deal with dubias? Yes. Yeah, I probably. Fear. It is for me. Although crickets are worse. <laughs> I'd rather do dubias over crickets any day. Same. I feel the same way. I just I don't like the smell of crickets even. So no, nope. not a fan. And when I get a big male with wings, it gets fed first because I <laughs> my alarm clock is cricket noises. I don't need the real ones. Yeah, no. exactly. They get fed first. The adult males get fed first. If you have wings, you get eaten. That's the rules. Gone, gone. <laughs> get out of here. All right, well, uh, speaking of buggy things, let's change gears a little bit for the sure. next question. Can you two tell us some of the main similarities and differences between keeping and breeding isopods and geckos? Oh, boy. Do you want to handle one of those, or do you want me to just <laughs> jump right in? Okay. The biggest, the biggest difference between the two is that for the geckos, I'm on the geckos every other day, every other day. We're feeding, we're watering, we're checking, we're cleaning, we're we're doing something with the geckos every day. And for our facility, and I, I can't even stress enough, you know, we're, again, I hate to say this from a boastful way, I'm just trying to say it from a point of view, that we have over 600 enclosures. So I try to break down the, the feeding and by areas so that I don't have to work on everything on one day. So for the geckos, mm-hmm. You know, it's a constant, um, it's a constant attention to these animals in major detail to make sure everybody's healthy, to make sure that there's no sheds, to make sure that there's no fighting, you know, on and on and on and on, checking for eggs, checking for eggs. For isopods, isopods I check once a week. And, and if you've seen my videos, many, many, many times it's open the top, Food in, water, close the top. I don't know. Oh. What? Isn't that <laughs> yeah. 
When, no. when you're down yeah, you don't sit there and talk to them like the rest there. of us will. If you're there alone, it's like a four or five hour process. This is true. This is true. If I'm down there by myself, I know that I can take my time a little bit more. If Nanette's on there, we're flying through. We're done in we're, an hour. Yeah, she, she has her, her process and I have my process and they're like East Coast, East Coast and West Coast apart. So get it done. West Caida. You're done. <laughs> Did I do Perfect. that right? Just stop. Uh, <laughs> I do. I do the West Side for Winterfell. It's my, but it's probably could get me shot. So I'm gonna not do that anymore. Yeah. Um, it's in my basement. My, my studio. Yeah, Wisconsin. There you go. Uh, my friends uh, are texting in on another message, and they. I just wanted to mention throughout this comment that I had to correct them that you're not Chicago people. Uh, but they wanted to comment how you're obviously truly in love, and I had to bravo. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Oh. Now I can do the what Wisconsin, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, sideways. I don't know what that means. I don't uh, know either. Yikes, I, we've got a car that's pulling up, <laughs> <laughs> slow riding. Yeah, all right. So we have established that Hoffman Segi is the king of ice pods, have we not? Yeah, I, I thought that was obvious. Moving on, next question. <laughs> well, this is related. Who's the king of geckos? Wow. Wow. That's that's a major league curveball right there. Who is the king? Okay. <clears throat> See, I have to take this time to process those kinds of questions. So the king of geckos is, of course, of course, crested geckos. Yay! So geckos are the king of all geckos. This one's going to jump all it over the place. <laughs> so this is Poppy Seed, and he'll settle down in just a minute, but he's probably going to jump a little bit, and we're probably not going to get him in focus at all. How about that? How about that? Nice. Nice nice years of experience right there. <laughs> I don't think I was even watching him, so he's going to go again, I think. But anyways, yeah, let's take that up. up. Uh, he's thinking about it. Crested geckos are absolutely the king of all geckos because they don't need any special lighting. They don't need any special heat. They eat a uh, crusted gecko diet. They're super easy to handle. They're soft as anything. Come on, Poppy Seed. You They're want adorable. To They're adorable, adorable too, that They're face. They're adorable. Uh. Look at that face. He waved at you. <laughs> he's so, like, hi, as the buddies. We go to we go to these shows. We go to these shows and boy, that's terrible lighting. We go to these shows and if I bring out a crusted gecko, I know that I've sold it. It's just okay. that easy. So from a king of geckos, it's I think I think the easiest one to keep, the easiest one to care for, the one with no problems ever whatsoever is crusted gecko. Now, if you want to take talk about from a marketing standpoint or whatever then there's just so many very Masovi would be i guess the top of my list but there's so many other really super unique geckos out there that so many people want I put up a question that i think is appropriate for now like we don't need to go into q a on this but how big of an enclosure do cresties need that's yep. from matt todd <clears throat> that's that's a great question so we look at it like this. We keep our pairs, and we're very fortunate in that we have a facility that warms up in the spring and cools down in the fall. But we keep our crested gecko pairs, that's a male and a female, in a 20 extra high uh, aquarium with a screen top. We mist every other day. We feed every other day, every other day, winter, every third day or so. Um, but we keep them in a 20 extra high. Bigger is better. Um, but they really don't need a ton. Our babies, our babies we keep in small 19 quarts until they're about four months, five months of age. Okay. okay. Now, did, did you have a baby so we could get an idea of the size? And would that baby be ready to move up or still be okay in the smaller enclosure? Let me see. Let me see if I might just have a baby. Oh, here's one right here. Ta-da! Ta-da! Thanks, Nanette. Not planned at all. Thanks, just 
So babies are a little bit. This will never work on camera. This babies oh are God, look so. At that guy. Look, at look at him looking up. He's looking you know, at like, something. Where do I go? Oh, what he's photogenic. If only the focus would get on him. I know. Stop focusing on me. Stop focusing on Nanette. Wow, I'm I'm shocked. Absolutely shocked that he's. I'm going to see if I can get him to jump. I think um, I need to buy that one from you if he's not already sold because he's doing this for us. <laughs> My goodness, look at that. I don't know if this shows up on camera. I don't all. know, Josh. If you get him and he ends up in the background, we're going to have a new star to the show. You're going to have competition from this guy. Uh, <laughs> I'll get him a tiny sweater and a little wig. Yeah. He'll be gorgeous. I would love that. Okay, that no. <laughs> 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 no, look, I got the head shake from Nanette. I got it. You got oh, it. You got it Josh. No, you don't. Show's you over. Yep, thanks Show's for coming, over. guys. Uh, that's everybody. it. Click. Good night. <laughs> Good night. I win. What is for a gecko? Oh. What uh, what what morph is that guy supposed to be? Or is he going? This to? is a red. There's so many okay. different traits in crusted geckos. There really are. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, this is a super red. Am I right? Let me see if I can pull this up. You sent me some great photos, but I'm just having a hard time pulling them up on this. Oh, that's okay. I got to get my two monitor thing going. So, well, Josh is working out the pictures um, kind of related to the how big of an enclosure do they need question is what are the best resources for researching your future geckos? It depends. It depends. So, the easiest easiest way is to go onto the internet. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sites giving you the basic care. And that's a red flame crested gecko. And it looked better than that in the uh, in real life. So the internet is chock full of information about care of geckos, especially crested geckos, especially leopard geckos. Great source of information. But so that's the good thing about the internet. Tons and tons and tons of information. The bad thing about the internet is tons and tons and tons of information. A lot of it good, some of it bad. What's good, what's bad? What's right, what's wrong? I don't know how to choose. I, I'm so confused. There's so many websites that say uh, 20 extra high is a good enclosure size. Oh. There's so many that say a 40 breeder size is good. I don't get it anymore. I give up. So that's to answer the one side of the question. The other side of the question is go to a reptile show, go online to somebody's site and find three experts, three people that will talk to you as a new keeper. You don't want to hear, are you buying a gecko? Are you buying a gecko or not? You want somebody, even at a show that has customers lined up that will stop what they're doing and answer basic questions for you. Take that information and then ask the next crested gecko breeder and then ask a third crested gecko breeder. Pull all that information together. Think about what happens in nature and make your own judgment. So you might hear, again, 20 extra high. You might hear a 40. You might hear a 10 gallon. And then you have to kind of simulate that information and make sure that it makes sense for yourself. But if you find three people that really know their stuff, balance it out, and and that's your resource. That's your research part right there. Fantastic. Does that make sense? That's, yeah, that also yeah. sounds like a really good way to go about picking your source when you are ready to choose a breeder. Um, yes. Yeah. I know that, Wally, you post more about isopods on the YouTube right now, but I would also say check out, like, the Supreme Gecko channel. Look at what else is available. Now, you do have to have some basic research skills to weed out who's giving relatively accurate information or information that could be dealt with and who's just talking out of an orifice, but... <laughs> this guy. This guy. Yeah, uh, we forgot to say it before. Josh and I are not experts. We did forget to say that. We're not experts. We're just, I have an expert mouth and that's all that it is. It's not attached to this idiot brain at all. Um, let's see. So Wally, Wally, yeah. yes. uh, last question from me. So do you have any solid, um, like quick and easy pro tips for people like me that are relatively new to the hobby? Like I thought I knew how to keep crested geckos, but not like I kept them alive. I think is the thing that I did. 
before uh, before meeting you, honestly. So um, give me quick and get to the point pro tips. Sure, absolutely. So you were quick. quick. Oh, then no, if it's uh. quick, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> um, um, quick tip, yes. So if it's for the, the many, many, many questions that we get, one of the very first things that I'll ask back, hey, my gecko isn't eating. Hey, it seems like it's it's uh, stressed out. Hey, my gecko isn't moving. Very first question right back to that person is, what are your temperatures? No, no, exactly what your animal's requirements are for temperatures. Trust the geckos. If you're comfortable, they're comfortable. Well, my house is my house is kind freezing. of my house is freezing. So my house is freezing. So maybe they're not you know as comfortable as I am in a freezing home. But know your crested geckos temperatures. And again, that's that's what nobody's going to say. You know, fifty degrees. Everybody's going to say high sixties to eighty degrees. Everybody's going to say that, and it might vary a little tiny bit, but that's their comfort zone. Do I need a heater for my crested gecko? Sixty-eight to eighty. No, you don't. Um, do I need a heater for my leopard gecko? Well, there you go, right there. Different animals, you need a heater for a, a leopard gecko. So if somebody comes back to me and says, my leopard gecko stopped eating, it's fall, and all of a sudden they haven't eaten for a week, I'll say, number one, what are your temperatures? Number two, can you, can you send me a picture of the enclosure? Send me a picture of the enclosure. How long has the animal not been eating? Has anything... <laughs> changed has anything changed so find a good person to talk to number two look at temperatures look if you have a, an a animal that has stopped eating or is acting different what's changed if it's a long-term good situation and it turns bad all of a sudden what changed yeah my guy stopped eating after, after it escaped, escaped. after so. it escaped yeah, it was really hard. He was out for, uh, God, a couple weeks. I just assumed that he had passed on. Like, I was leaving food out. I left the sink kind of dripping. And then my wife came in one morning with, uh, I was in the bathroom, and she just reached in with the Tupperware container with the gecko <laughs> in it. And the cat had just pinned him down to the floor in the living room. And then uh -huh. she picked up her paw, but not a, there was hardly a scratch on him. Like, wow. nothing, but... But he was so stressed out. So, but if it wasn't for the cat, I don't think we would have found him. Oh my so, um, yeah, the, the super success story. So that cat got treats for a week, um, but it was really hard to get him back to normal. So, uh, but now he's doing great. So, yeah. and I lock. And there's three different things I lock. Now. <laughs> so, and the shower uh, door. And the shower door. So your wife can't share special treats with you in the exactly shop. she just reached in she's like is this yours and i was like well who else's would it be yes it's mine <laughs> who else would bring that into our house i can't tell you how many times that's happened here ah <laughs> oh, is this yours it's crazy ah <laughs> uh, claire that's let's, all, uh, that's let's all i'm gonna say about that yeah go ahead so uh, we're going to start transitioning into q and I already see one um, actually related question in the comments. So I'm going to bring that up. And if you have any other questions, just start putting them in. Um, so Angie wants to know, what if the crusty eats one time but not the other? The temp is the same and there's another crusty next to it that's still eating all the time. It's Angie. <laughs> oh, yeah. She <laughs> <laughs> we already told her not to ask questions, Angie. What Angie, the hell? We have our dog right under the tripod for the camera. So if all of a sudden <laughs> it looks like we're on Mars, you'll know what, what's going on here. So so one crested is eating, one's not. Uh, um, I'm assuming they're well, we'll talk about what containers. are they in separate containers? If they're in if they're both in the same container. That's pretty simple. That's one is bullying the other one. One is saying, hey, this is my house, Wisconsin or whatever. And it's saying you don't get any food whatsoever. If they're in separate containers, there's something different. There's something you just have to 
you have to find something that's different between them. Is it age? Maybe the one that's not eating is getting maybe a little bit older. Is it a male? Is it a male? And there's a female in the other cage. And all that male is thinking about is, is being with the female and he's off feed. So, you know, so this is what I do every day. And this is, this is the fun part of the hobby for me. It's kind of the Sherlock Holmes. I'm the Sherlock Holmes of the gecko world. I try to find out, you know, what's going on. And I work through a, a process. That's, that's my old life. I'm working through a process and eliminating all the things that, that might be wrong until I get down to you know, the real reason. But ultimately, it's going to be Angie. That's the real thought you were the problem. skipper and not so much Sherlock Holmes. Is that the sniffer? The, the, the skipper, bloodhound? Skipper. Is that not correct? Sure. <laughs> Come on, I wore this Gilligan hat for you, Wally. Come on. Come on. Gilligan! <laughs> Ah, I missed I missed the Bebo on hats. Oh well. Now it makes sense. All right. All right. So I see a couple other questions. Um, or I've got one either way. Well, that's not it. That was yeah, they're separate. Okay. So you gotta play Sherlock. <laughs> oh, here's one. Oh, sorry. I didn't see the other one up there. So why don't they like melon flavor? What kind of melon? Yeah, and maybe water, maybe the melon water. isn't in season. Maybe you're buying a bad melon. A bad melon. I don't know. Why don't they like melon? Your flavor. family, or are we talk, still talking about geckos here? I don't know. Melon flavor. Melon flavor. Um, I'm guessing it's like the Permian exotics, or not Permian exotics. I'm guessing it's uh, Pangea. Pangea. They they don't. So Morris is. I I think what Morris is asking is why does my crusted gecko eat the mel the watermelon. Uh, what's the other watermelon, watermelon banana, banana watermelon, flavor? Apricot. And I'll 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 call BS on that one because um, crusted geckos love 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 the watermelon flavor. So so I don't know what else you're feeding. I'm guessing if it's bugs, they're saying, "Give me more bugs. I don't want this stuff in a dish. That's not what I like. Give me more bugs." And what you have to say back to that crusted gecko, you have to actually look at the crusted gecko right in the <laughs> eye and say, "No." No, you're not getting any more bugs. You're going to eat your crusted gecko diet. So there. So what you, that's what Crystal would do. The gecko was. So you to, yeah, you have to go for a while and and not offer whatever else you're you're offering because they're kind of stuck on that. A lot of times, what people will say is, I, I keep trying the watermelon and they won't eat insects. And I'll ask, well, how long have you kept them away from the crusted gecko? And they'll say, well, I don't want it to die. So. I feed on a Monday and I try on Wednesday and they don't eat the insects. So I give them the food Thursday. Yeah. See, they have you trained. Pull everything, give them insects, give them insects, give them insects for a couple of weeks. They're going to eat the insects. One thing I picked up in some of my unrelated to geckos lizard research um, is that a picky lizard is not a hungry lizard. And I found that to be true with my also not a gecko. So, you know, if we have waxworms and he's the only lizard in the house, so we make the mistake of feeding them more like a staple while we have them, sometimes he snubs other stuff till he decides he's hungry again, and then he's back on the more nutritious food. That's exactly it. And, you know, obviously the criteria here is based around a healthy animal and healthy food. I mean, don't be pulling your, your, your insects and give them – Give that animal, you know, four-day-old melon crusted gecko diet. You want to make sure that you're giving healthy uh, foods, obviously, and you want to make sure that your animals are healthy. Never, ever, ever try to change anything for, you know, in a dietary standpoint for a, a non-healthy animal. One of the guys at the aquatics and reptile shop that really helped me when I first got my lizard uh, often said that in captivity they eat like kings. So if they're not eating the crested gecko diet because you're overfeeding them on other stuff, back off on the other stuff and let them get hungry. Um, but definitely don't switch to underfeeding. Just you, we want to be healthy. And, and, and that, Claire, that brings up another really, really super good point in that I'll get a lot of messages and they're not eating their diet. What do you mean they're not eating? Well, they, it doesn't seem like they are eating all of their diet. What do you mean they're not eating all of their diet? Well, I put 
I put a cup and a half of food in for my crusted gecko, you know, like a cereal bowl full, and it's not finishing it. The, a well, gecko. Because if it did, its stomach would explode, and then you wouldn't have a gecko. So exactly. So or you get one that, like this big. Yes. Yeah. That would no. be cool. No. no yeah. not. Like the a puzzle awesome. block it. No, All right, so I, I'm going to do my co-host job here. We've got another question up, and we've got another cool question underneath, and just to keep mm -hmm. things rolling, because I know we could talk about this all night, and it's been great, but... I put this one up on the board from DEA Exotics. Um... Andrew, that's a loaded question, because you know exactly, exactly what my favorite morph is. It, it, and in Crescent, there's only a couple of morphs, so I think that we're talking more like traits. My favorite trait is, I wish I was wearing, I've got, I've got Scott Wesley's shirt, Isopod Freaks on, um, a name drop there, name drop He's a there. friend of the show. He is, good, he is. Good. He's our admin of the Isobuddies group. We love him. He's a proud admin of the show. My, I usually have my Supreme Gecko sh shirt on and it has a nice big red crusted gecko. Red is my favorite morph. Um, red is my favorite color. No, orange is my favorite color. So I love the red morph and crusted geckos. What's the next special crusted gecko morph? I think it's going to be either a pure black animal with white stripe down the back. I think that people are working on that. Or awesome. eventually it's going to be a pied crusted gecko. That's that's my thought. That's what that's what I see. I think. I think there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff kind of popping up here and there, and, and people are going to go, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. But once we see that black animal with a white stripe down the back, everybody's jaw is going to drop. Um, this is the next question I saw, I think. Is that right, Claire? Yeah, that's the next one that I see. All right. It's from yeah. Grady. I think there's two. I think that Periodora picked it because it is a great – um hobby pet gecko i think that's one reason why that's one of the most underrated geckos and i think also from another side when we talk about morphs and traits and and breeding and genetics and getting down to something really super cool looking i think pick the falls in that uh area too so for the very uh beginner gecko keeper pick are just the perfect animals for the more advanced breeders and I'll, I'll I'll kind of put myself somewhere around there uh, with the 20 years, but I would say Picta is one of my favorites and and also one of the most underrated. Another, I'll I'll give you two answers, two answers for the price of one. The other animal that I think is way underrated from a gecko standpoint is I don't know if you have a picture or not, but it's uh, Felsuma laticata laticata. It's called the gold dust gecko. It's a green. Day gecko with spangles, gold spangles down the back, and red marks around the head. It's just a really cool looking gecko. It's only about three, three and a half inches uh, long. Uh, they play together. Um, super easy to breed. Uh, small enclosure. Really super underrated gecko. I'm gonna see if this is. Is that the one you sent me? The day gecko you sent me. It's on. Yeah, it's on like a. a Two by two piece of yeah, Gosh. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's not green. green. That's not I slipped green. right past them. Other direction. I'm trying. Uh, back and to the left. Back one more. There we go. Back there we go. The so that's a lot. Laticata, laticata, Felsuma laticata, laticata, gold dust, and uh, the picture doesn't do it justice because it's my picture. But down the back is gold spangles, just like you're looking over a sea with waves, little tiny waves shimmering in the, the moonlight. Wow, oh, I should have really like, oh, wow. yeah, thought that. Those are beautiful. Yeah, they they pretty, really yeah. are beautiful. Hi, Red Dalmatian is from, that may be Scott who commented on your shirt, but uh, well, I don't know that for sure. Mm-hmm. Is that a question? Hi, Red Dalmatian. Dalmatian? I think it might just question. be another morph that could be uh, up and coming. You might have been saying that's what the gargoyle was. Because I went to that gargoyle on accident. Um, oh, 
I bet you they're talking about a crusted, a high red Dalmatian crusted gecko, which is up and coming. Which is up and coming, and, and that's a pretty that would be a pretty impressive animal. Yeah. All right, last question, and then we gotta go. Okay. Um, so, I'm not really into March Madness. I'm more interested in like spring training coming up. So, fantasy sports moment. If you were gonna take geckos and or isopods and put them on a ball team, which species or morphs would you have in which uh, positions? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Alternately, how about the puppies? <laughs> on second, and then on first. Do I get a DH? Oh, he's gonna need an hour. <laughs> okay, Do I get so... a DH? Sure. Can I just do my top like four? Sure. My top four yeah. geckos. Yeah. Okay. Top my four top. Geckos. Okay, top four geckos, and I'm going to exclude crested geckos and leopard geckos. So my top four geckos would be any type of a pachydactylus, and I, I show pictures on Instagram and on Facebook all the time of bicolor or uh, McLaughlin eye or something like that. Pachydactylus, a little teeny tiny gecko, but the babies are just unbelievable. Second one is a period or a stump bite. Tails are, are um, as orange as you can imagine. Tails are just beautiful. When they're, uh, when they're small, when they grow up, they look like, what do they look like? They're not as pretty. Lumps, they look like lumps. Um, another gecko, I love the chondrodactylus geckos because they're, they're smart. You, you could just tell that they're thinking through the whole process. Another gecko would be the ligodactylus um, Ligodactylus electric blue. It's Ligodactylus Williams eye, the electric blue, which is just phenomenal. I think I sent over a picture of that, just a solid blue. It's one of those geckos where if you walk into a, a room full of geckos, that's even though they're about two and a half, three inches long, that's a gecko that will catch your eye and you'll go, hey, yeah, this all this, but what's that gecko over there? So Ligodactylus Williams, I think, is just a I've phenomenal, seen, I've phenomenal. Seen pictures. They're the most gorgeous geckos I've ever seen. I've just had them. Picture. I've had them. The females look, unlike a lot of other geckos in that uh, genera, um, I think the females are just almost as outstanding as the males. So, Wow. wow. Nice. Clamorai, uh, Felsuma uh, Clamorai, another the jewel uh, day gecko, another beautiful animal. Did I answer the question? Um, yeah, I did. Good enough. Yeah. So Connor, I would be the pitcher. <laughs> right on. The only other question I have is from, from Angie. Should we put it up? Yeah, let's put it up. Why not? All right. Here she is. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> that was Adam. You, <laughs> you know better to even bring that up. So, so this is what Angie is doing right now. She she has a smile. Mm -hmm. She has a smile. You remember the last uh, Heath Ledger movie, The Joker, Batman? Yeah, she has yeah. a smile from ear to ear. She's probably um, sitting in her car down the street laughing yeah, she right probably, now. Angie, are you out there? <laughs> um, That's her snakes, slow riding by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> snakes are not happening. So here's the answer to that. Um, Nanette has informed me the one rule with keeping reptiles is if a, if a snake ever came into this house, she feeds and she takes the charge card. And the dog. Oh, and the dog. So, th no, th then no. And I will be in the best hotel I can find and be eaten as nice as I can on your charge card. Wow. Wow. So, no snakes. All right. That's pretty definitive. What if it's not your fault? What if it's Crystal that brings the snake in? She will not. Ooh, wow. <laughs> your, your, your little darling crystal, she, she brings up. Grandma, grandma with the puppy dog eyes. Grandma, look what I got. No, that's not going to work. She can leave with you. My daughter thinks all that stuff is gross, and my wife just totally pushes it. So she named Mr. Yucky. So that giant Hoffman oh, that you oh, sent me, yeah. she named him Mr. Yucky, and he's now the, like, the mascot of the show. R.I.P. <laughs> I'll, can I tell you one real quick story with Crystal? Yeah, absolutely. I knew, I knew she was hooked on animals when she was probably about five ish. She was downstairs helping grandma and grandpa. I was feeding mealworms to the crusted geckos. So the babies, I could just dump in the, the mealworms. So she was helping me. 
I, I would open a con container. She would take a couple of mealworms and throw two crystal, only two. Don't throw 20 of them in there. Throw two mealworms. So she was throwing the mealworms in. I opened up the container and I turned to open up another one. And all of a sudden this blood curdling, blood curdling yell. Just, just, oh my gosh, somebody just uh, died or something. So I look over thinking the worst. I'm thinking one has jumped on her. That's the only thing that could have happened. One jumped on her and she's just tears. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. She's crying. It's going to freak. It's freaking her out. She's never going to be one, want to be down here ever again. She never is going to want to help grandpa with his reptiles. Sure enough. Sure enough. A crusted gecko, just like we saw, you know, uh, poppy seed jumped and landed right around her throat and area. It baby. And it was a baby. It was a little tiny baby. And she was screeching. And she, but yet she had the biggest smile on her face, like oh, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So I that's at that cool. moment in time, I knew she was hooked forever. She totally. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, and she that was. I could tell you, I could tell you from personal experience that scream is legitimately what happens when a very small lizard unexpectedly lands on your chest. Um, I used to have wild house geckos that visited me when I lived in Asia and in Oman. And one time when I was in Oban, I was laying on my bed and this gecko took a leap off the ceiling fan and landed on me and I screamed and it scurried off. <laughs> I, I do the same thing when they land on, on my chest too. I, I scream yeah. like a like crystal. And it was really just because it's unexpected. It's nothing against yeah. the geckos. <laughs> she has no fear whatsoever. None. There. None whatsoever. Yeah. Ah. Well, that was great, Wally. Thank you so much for coming out. I think that's about all we have for you. So maybe you can catch the end of the hockey game. I'm, I'm oh, right there. We'll see you guys. Bye. Are we ready to go? <laughs> Thank you, Wally. Oh, yeah. What was the no, count? Seriously. What did we have? Avocado, how high did we get? Did we get close? Did we get 40? I don't think we got close. I think there was 10 on at once. Well, then we just have to have Wally come back see. and try again another time. We'll get I him to wear a quarter that. of the wig on this. I would, this I would side. love that. The next okay. time I can, I can talk isopods or yeah. fish or yeah. me fishing or baseball. I know you guys want to talk baseball. So mm -hmm. have me on the next time. We'll talk some baseball. That'll be tough. That'll um, be tough. I want to do a football game with the isopods on that old, um, remember that old metal vibrating football game they used to have? Yes, yes. I. Yeah. So you're saying use the isopods and key positions and just let them kind of <laughs> I think they'll be know, horrible. Around <laughs> that would be so torturous for them. I couldn't do it. But the vision in my head is amazing. Um, I'll <laughs> if try I was 12, and convince I would Josh on baseball. I'll try and convince Josh on baseball. I think we're booked out most of the way to the World Series. So it's better to wait till the end of the season anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah, good. We're kind of booked out till October. So Cool. But there's some people are shifting around. So it's been a really, as far as yeah. getting volunteers for this, it's been really successful. So uh, a lot um, of good job, if you're guys. watching, Thank if you. you're interested in the hobby and you want to be a volunteer, slip into our DMs. We'd love to get you on the schedule. It's fun. Look how much fun Wally and Nanette had. Look at Nanette's smile. <laughs> I was going for another head shake, but I didn't get it. As <laughs> long as we're on camera, she's going to... Uh to act this way and then oh. you know i get i get off and she's gonna remember, remember that thing that you said back really? in, yeah what, i'm gonna get it <laughs> so bad nah. Whatever. it's been a blast well, guys i really appreciate blast. thanks for coming out to talk. thanks yeah keep up the good work thank you bye bye wally nice and if you want to help us keep up our good work, you can go like caress the like button, tap mm, the bell. Yeah. Um, share us to all of your friends. Share it, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. We have we're on Twitter and Instagram right now, brand new this week under Iso Buddies oh, Productions. Tweeting. We, Mm -hmm. We already have like 40 followers on Instagram. So if you're not among them, go join us. I put up pictures of my pods. I put up pictures of weird things that happen in the ISO Buddies group. ISO like, pods, you baby. know, mm -hmm. Grady's Challenge. So if we're going to be Grady's mm, Challenge next time. <laughs> Smash that subscribe button and crush your face against the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos or um, 
I may post some solo videos from time to time of things that I have going on as well. So uh, expect one from my ant farm this week. So it's coming along really well. So Josh's um, ant farm. And then Josh, do you remember who's going to be on next week right here Tuesday night? Oh, God. I don't remember that's off the top of my head, and that's bad. That's almost disrespectful. Who is next I week? have a spreadsheet for we have ants. We have an ant have thing ants. going on. So with Tyler and Tony. So it's a... It's a couple of friends who don't know, live to live near each other anymore, but they uh, still go out and collect ant colonies or watch ant colonies, collect queens. So we're going to talk ants next week. Um, super interesting stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to just put my ant farm here under the, under the camera and let you just watch them the whole show. Let the queen lay some eggs. She's got a huge brood pile right now. My own does. Um, other than that, yeah, there, there are some young guys, but they come highly recommended. Uh, I'm excited to interview with them. I need to actually reach out and get in touch with them again. Um, but that's all we have. We're going to be over that's in it. our... Did we post the link to the, the ISO Buddies chat in Facebook? If not, we'll be opening the room any second We'll be opening now. that so, soon. So go over. If you're not a member of the ISO Buddies group on Facebook, join ISO Buddies. Don't worry. Josh and I will let you in if you don't get auto-approved. And when it comes up that there's a room but there's people in it, stop by and say, hey, that's our after party. Um, I'll be working on yeah. my next stuffed isopod. And um, who knows? Somebody might get out their bug collection, show us some cool stuff. You never know what's going to happen in chat. You never, you never do. <laughs> I'll just be feeding everything again. Uh, by the way, pork rinds were a failure. You would think they'd be good, but uh, pork rinds were a huge failure for me. So anyway, uh, join us over there, and we'll see you next week. Or and it looks like the link is posted, so we will see you next time. All right. Bye, everyone. Awesome. Bye, everybody. All right. Uh, oh.